Hello you lovely lot. So today I'm going to be giving you my six top tips on how to get the best from them beautiful magwise. So you've arrived at your tackle shop to get the lovely magwise and if you're anything like me, you forgot your maggot tub, you will be presented with your magwise in a bag like this. Now it's brilliant for preserving the bait so as soon as you've got them in the bag what you want to make sure you're doing so you're fishing the day after get home if you've got a fridge ideal if not store them somewhere cool garage floor you know somewhere cool in the shed or something like that but what you need to make sure you're doing uh, on the morning of the match is go and open the magwise up so the reason for that is obviously you need to let them <gasps> breathe get all the air into them and it's all about the storage now for when you get to the venue so once you've got them out of the bag Store them. I like to store them in a big tub. I've got six pints of maggots here because I love feeding loads of bait, folks. But storing them in a big tub like that gives them loads of room for aeration and they'll soon come to. They'll look dead as soon as you open them after a bag, but I reckon at like 10 or 15 minutes time they'll come back to and they'll just remain lovely and fresh like that, uh, ready for you to catch those lovely fishes. Tip number two next then, folks, and this is a not a controversial one, but it all comes down to personal preference and confidence, and that is Magwai colour. Uh, for me, I'm so meticulous. It's got to be it's got to be whites in the summer, uh, and then reds in the winter. Now, you'll see today I've got a mixture of more reds, uh, sorry, more whites than reds. Um, when we're coming into sort of this this time of year, sort of like what we're we now, like middle of September, so sort of like really, really early autumn, I'll start to introduce a few reds. And then when we get into winter, I can't use whites, it's got to be reds. I'm proper funny. So if I was getting like four pints of maggots, say, for the heights of summer, it'd all be purely whites. And then coming into sort of like when it goes a bit colder, slowly introduce reds. And then in the winter, it'd be like two pints of whites, uh, sorry, two pints of reds and no whites whatsoever. However, when I'm fishing on rivers, I've got one in here, folks, I found one. I've got to got to use bronze maggots or sort of like floral maggots. It's just, it's one of them things, it's, it definitely comes down to confidence uh, and the belief in that colours of baits make a difference. And it's only like, you know, when you're using sort of, you know, your little boilies or your wafters or something for a method, maggot choice and uh, colour definitely is massive for me. So. Whites in the summer, reds in the winter, and then when I'm on rivers, it's got to be discos or bronze maggots. Yellows don't really come into it for me, but you do catch lots of roach on yellow, so use yellows as well. Tip number three next then, folks, and this is the all-important how to hook the maggots correctly. All too often I see maggots hooked wrongly, so we're going to go through the three ways I'd hook the maggots and then how I'd ban the maggots as well, which is pretty much... All I do for me shallow fishing now, folks, I just love banded maggots because yeah, you just straight back into the fish, you know, nice and efficient, nice and quick. So, first things first. Now, the old traditional way of hooking a maggot is to squeeze the maggot sort of like from the thin end, so the, the fat end is protruding, and then that little frilly bit, just hooking the maggot through there. Yeah, so you're basically you're not bursting it, and that maggot has got plenty of wriggle in it. I don't do that anymore, folks. It proper, proper does me head in. The reason I don't do that way anymore is because I feel as though the maggot, with it obviously turning round, you're going to get more sort of overfolds, you know, when you hook, certainly from likes of skimmers and roach, an absolute blooming nightmare for it, and it's, uh, and I feel it's because you're hooking your maggot that way. So, personally, the only way, it, sorry, the only reason it'd be for me to hook it that way would be if i was i'm going to show you quickly if i was after a lot of sort of like silverfish you know at speed and i want to keep the same bait on i basically hook it similar to that but i'd hook it a lot deeper now this is a 14s hook I'm not changing down hooks at the minute folks you know 14s and what i do i go in quite a far way and then just sort of fold that maggot up the hook so again you see it's still not burst but look how um, far that maggot's gone on. Loads of wriggle in it. And obviously with a big hook, it's masking the hook. So the only time I'd ever hook it in the bottom, if you like, would be when I'm after a lot of small fish, you know. Straight back in, unhook the fish, straight back in again. So that's that way. Now, the way I hook maggots, so let's first go through, if I was fishing on the bottom, say, obviously a time of year now, double maggot, three maggots, we'll put double on, is I'll hook them through the tip. So again, squeeze the maggot out, and we're just going to nicely hook them through the tip get another one on and that is how I hook 
maggots for this time of year. Exactly the same if you're putting multiples of baits on, you know, sort of like four, five and six, if you're fishing the edges on your, or on your short line or something. You see there when they're wriggling around, they're not sort of like curling back under the point of the hook. Uh, I think it makes a massive difference, but obviously doubly, doubly make sure that you're not bursting the bait. It's got to look as natural as possible for those lovely fishes. And then the other way, if I was fishing through the water, certainly more so when it comes a little bit cold and we've had a first frost or two and you're looking to catch these fish through the water, that's side hooking them. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way of hooking them through the side. Basically, what you don't want to do, I'll show you the wrong way first, which is, again, all too often I see, is to just get the maggot and then just hook that maggot like that. Yeah, it's, at, it's the wrong way. Are you getting that, Richard? It's the wrong way on your hook. What, you, what you've got to make sure you're doing is you've got to follow the sort of like grain of the maggot if you like, but that is the, the wrong way. You're not going to get as many fish like that, but if you do it this way, so basically the correct way is to squeeze the maggot out, fold it over so it's in sort of like a, a C shape, and then you just want to nick that hook through a segment of the maggot. Yeah, so you see now that maggot is following the shape of the hook. I'll just twist it round so you can see the maggot is in line with the hook and it's so much more effective than that other way that I've just showed you. The, uh, the other benefit of um, this as well is hooking the maggots obviously straight on your hook is it'll tell you when you, you know, your, your hook's gone blunt. So as soon as there's any resistance whatsoever in that maggot, it pops or what have you, don't think about it folks, change your, change your hook, it does make a big difference. Now when I'm fishing shallow, you see we've got a little, little said shallow rig on here, I do love to band maggots. I think it makes a massive difference. Where's my bander? So basically, put the little bander bait through the micro band. It's got to be a micro band, folks, not one of the medium bands or small bands. And we're getting two maggots. Don't worry about, you know, roll them on your leg or anything like that. Just make sure two maggots facing the same way. Squeeze them out. We're putting them in the band, letting that band come down. And then look at that. It's just such an effective way of fishing even for like mugging fish as well it's been my go-to mugging mugging bait for a long time that just double white maggot just stands out over anything folks but yeah that's me uh that's my tips on hooking maggots go and give it a try right then you lovely lot our brand new winning ways merch has just arrived we have got the blue hoodie the black hoodie the grey polo and also available is the limited edition Pets on the Cave t-shirt. So head over to www.winningways.shop and get yourself them bought. Yeah! Okay then you lovely lot. So it's tip number four time for these lovely magwise now and I want to go through a floating maggots with you and in particular when I'd use them. Now for me floating maggots is pretty much exclusively for the for the feeder you know when there's lots of particles coming out certainly a maggot feeder uh, when you know fish feeding up in the water the target or obviously fish feeding slightly off the bottom but in particular chub eyed roach hybrids your skimmers that are feeding slightly off the bottom it can be an absolute deadly tactic it's something that i used to use a lot back in day on the days of the river weaver you know fishing sort of like three four foot tails and having these maggots just coming in so slow and even like floating off the bottom as well dead easy to prepare folks nothing complicated whatsoever what you will need though so obviously normal maggot lid tub floating maggot lid tub you need to make sure you're leaving a bit of a lip around the maggot lid otherwise the little buggers will crawl out yeah so first things first empty maggot tub we're just getting Bearing in mind you're not going to be feeding floating maggots because the fish will be like coming up on the surface. You don't want to do that. It's purely for your hook only. So we don't need loads of, loads of hook weight in there. So we'll just put, what, 100, 150 maggots in, something like that. And then all we're doing, you've got to be careful with how much water you're putting on. Now, bearing in mind, I'm just using water. You know, by all means, fizzy pop will work. You know, your favourite fizzy pop, whatever. I used to use just like normal Coke back in the day, but... I quite like drinking that, so I'll drink it now. But water, whatever, fizzy, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. If you've got personal preferences somewhere, then use it. So all we're going to do, I can't stress how important it is not to put too much water on. You basically just want it just so it's sort of covering the maggots, just so they can sort of like... Are you getting, are you getting in on that, Richard? Yeah? Just so they can sort of like ingest that water uh, and then take it on. And then what you'll see, like, obviously not now, a few minutes... Uh, 
probably doesn't take that long actually 20 minutes you'll see sort of like the feeder tube here the little black thing that'll go sort of like a really opaque gray color and that's when they've taken on that water so obviously at that stage not got loads of water on them they will start to crawl out if you don't have a lid over the top so it's again it's first thing you want to do have i got the wrong plumbing no i've not it's first thing you want to do when you get to um your peg is make sure um if you're going to be using floating maggots is make sure you do them then by the time you get to fishing um they'll be perfect for you so two or three of them on a hook and it just the maggot depending obviously the, the size and weight of your hook they are going to fall dead slow or if you're using a finer hook they will pop up off the bottom it can be a deadly tactic when it gets colder give it a try folks tip number five next then folks and this is all about killing those lovely magwise but there's reasons why you would definitely use dead maggots over live maggots i suppose the the main one is for if you're method feeder fishing and you know you're, you're tucking your maggots inside your method if they were alive once you go for the cast they're going to be wriggling inside that and you obviously your feed is going all over the place the other reason would be to detract the attention of small fish you know when you're fishing maybe in the edges or something or pretty much anywhere where you're getting mad with little babby fish with the vibrations of live maggots that's why dead maggots can really come into play uh, and it, they tend to be a lot softer as well so things for like skimmers and all that dead maggots come into play and obviously putting multiples on for, for these great big carp so how do we uh, kill them then so if you're wanting loads and you're feeding loads then i definitely recommend storing them in a bag put them in a freezer getting them out of said bag putting them into some water and covering them in water but for today's purposes what we want them for the hook then the best way is just get a few in your palm we don't want loads so we're having loads in the maggots will burst all over in your in your hands and like it stinks it's proper horrible so just get a few in your in your palm of your hands like that and then just keep keep working them through yeah getting back into the middle of your hands you see already they're starting to look a little bit worse for wear and it basically the heat the heat that you're generating in your hands kills the maggots like that see if you just wanted to, you know, roll one or two for the, the hook, you just get a couple of maggots out and just give them a little bit of a, a roll on your knee. That's basically what I do, sort of like, you know, winter style fishing when I'm after sort of like skimmers, these little baby skimmers. I'll just roll a couple on my knee, pick one out and away you go. But, you know, for the method, if you're going to be using a few or fishing down the edge as a hook bait, then just make sure just before the start of a match, what I tend to do is just get sort of 10, 10 or a dozen lots of, you know, sort of, 20 30 maggots or something just keep doing that in me in my hands and that'll get you enough for, for the hook baits on the day so give it a try folks but dead maggots can be absolutely deadly on its day tip number six then for you lovely lot and it's all about preserving your maggots so when you've been to the shop you bought your maggots you usually get asked whether you want maize or sawdust on them personally i'll always always ask for maize reason being if you get a little bit of maize in your eye then it just comes out nice but if you get sawdust in it blooming hurts so personal preference obviously for tougher maggots or for like keeping them a little bit longer and getting them into casters sawdust is probably better but i can't remember the last time i got them in sawdust so make sure ideally get them in maize now what's maize maize is this dead fine powder stuff now what i don't want is when i'm when i'm fishing imagine catching fish and all that starts clagging up and it gets all over your clothes and makes it look really dirty i want to make sure i'm riddling that off when i get to the swim first so what we'll do we'll just put a few few maggots in there and just show you what i mean by riddling that maze off you see it coming off there yeah i don't want out of bucket see all that maze coming off the maggots and then so three mil riddle this folks so the maggots don't crawl through just give them a nice good shake and then they go in there and then you can see them nice clean maggots lovely for for feeding now what can happen certainly when it's like really bright and hot and if you haven't got much shade around i'd always recommend putting you know certainly when you're getting lots of maggots putting them in a bit of shade if you can or putting your brolly up into a bit of shade but what will happen is if you're not looking after them they'll start to sweat and the worst thing in the world is when these maggots start to sweat and you know you're getting all that sort of like foam on the maggots and then you just can't feed them they go horrible so what i do is just get ideally maize you know maize back on the maggots again but if you've not got maize then a good substitute is is your personal favorite nice sweet smelling ground bait so just put a little bit of that over the maggots and then what that'll do 
Yeah, you don't need loads on. That'll just bring them back to, and it'll separate them. Even if they've got to the state where they have started to sweat, folks, put a little bit of ground bait, or as I say, ideally maize on them, and it'll bring them back into that state. Just separates the bait, and it keeps them, and gets them back to that fresh state again. So, sweaty maggots, folks, get some ground bait on them. Yeah! Right then, folks, because I'm that kind of guy, and I'm in a generous move, I said six top tips. Well, there's a little bonus one for you here, and that is, at the end of the session, how do you store your magwai? So, this um, relates to if you want to freeze them, or if you want to use them for however many weeks, really, folks. And I've, I've stored maggots for sort of two, three weeks, like, in the hottest of hot days over the summer. So simple to do. First thing you're going to need, though, is a nice sort of deep deep bags are so just a normal food bag these are large food bags you can open them up now I like to do mine in sort of pint bags if you like so I've just got me my pint tub there I'm just going to go into the magwise now these have got the the maize or the ground bait on and everything like that so we've got a pint of magwise there put them into the bag the most important thing though is that you're taking all the air out so don't like you get them sometimes in the shop like that with the air in. We don't want that. We want to make sure the air's out. And it's sort of like, certainly if you're not freezing them, get them into sort of suspended animation, if you like, so that these are perfect, again, for storing in a fridge or somewhere, you know, really cool, like your, your garage floor um, or, you know, corner of a shed or something like that. All we're doing, just simply just putting the knot in them, taking all that air out, as I say, and get that knot down there and they're perfect for storing then again next time you want to use them um the morning if you're going fishing just open the bag up putting them in a large tub and they will be perfect yet again for you to use so yeah hope you've enjoyed them tips folks go and give them all a go and i'm sure it's going to put more fish on the bank for you